Hi and welcome back to Forbidden Planet TV and Happy New Year to everyone out there. This is our first recording of 2024 which is very very exciting and it's already one of my absolute favourite favourite books. Um, so we are joined today by Frances White to talk about Voyage of the Dam. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> How was Christmas, New Year's and stuff for you all? Yeah, well, I would be chill, but then I've got a book coming out. So that's the thing. <laughs> that that's <applies>. less, <laughs> less relaxing, but yeah. <laughs> Saying it was, yeah, it's next year is fine, but then it's January, oh, really? so it's, it's, it's the month. actually yeah. this month. <laughs> <laughs> so, what can you tell us about your magical gay murder cruise book? <laughs> which I, yeah, you've stolen my tagline, which is the easy way to describe it, which is a magical gay murder cruise. Um, so it's about, um, there's a place called Concordia that uh, has been at peace for a thousand years and partly to celebrate this, uh, 12 heirs of the 12 different provinces that make up the empire go on a 12 day voyage at sea. They're going towards a sacred mountain, but on the journey, they start dying off one by one. So basically a lot of privileged kids and older <laughs> <laughs> killing each other off and uh, our main character is a bit of um uh how do i describe him he's um the only one of them who hasn't got a secret magical ability everybody has one he doesn't have one um he's gone there mainly to annoy everybody <laughs> to make them hating him but uh now he has to solve a murder yeah so <laughs> That's so, I mean, it's, it's not quite a trip to Benidorm, but no. it's, <laughs> so it's a lot more fraught. Um, so with the um, with the idea of the the kind of um, twelve different parts of the world and the twelve different um, characters that you have, was that kind of loosely based on anything? Like I was just thinking, maybe like the uh, Chinese, like zodiac or anything like mm. that, with the kind of different. Yeah, there's definitely some comparisons to be drawn. Some people have thought about the Chinese zodiac. It wasn't on purpose. <laughs> I kind of wanted a number that was not too big to lose track of who all the characters yes. were, but big enough to let me murder a bunch of them and there still be enough <laughs> characters left to have a mystery who's doing it. <laughs> that was the main. Uh, yeah, and twelve felt right. I don't know. I liked. I like there being twelve characters, and it, the journey takes twelve days. Mm. So yeah, I think that combination is easy to remember anyway for me. <laughs> <laughs> so did you did you ever kind of find it hard to keep track of those characters? Like, did any of them like, oh, where did I put this person last? Like, when I wrote that last chapter, where were they? Yeah, <laughs> are they still alive. <laughs> Incredibly so, <laughs> to the degree that uh, I made a spreadsheet, which is basically all the 12 characters are on it, and like all the days are mapped across the top, and for every single day I've put, well it's even like spread out between morning, afternoon, and night, which is how all the chapters are, mm. every uh, chapter is like one third of the day, and um, yeah, for, on the spreadsheet it tells me exactly what that character's doing at that time, even if they're not in the chapter, at least I know where they are because I didn't want to end up with like somebody accidentally being where a murder's happened uh, and yeah, and the reader good. noticing it because readers will notice these <laughs> things so I've got the spreadsheet I could be like no he's uh, somewhere else at that time <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I like spreadsheets they make me feel like I've got control <laughs> and what came, kind of came first for you in the world do you think was it the the characters first or was it kind of the the world that kind of came into existence for you? I think the first thing that came into existence was actually the plot yeah. before anything. So I, I wanted to sort of, in a way, it's like a little challenge to have the whole thing, mostly the whole thing, set at one location and like, you know, a very set amount of characters. So, and just to see if I could do a book that was over a short period, one location with that many characters. And then I would say the world and the characters kind of happen together. Mm. The thing about it is, although it's obviously there's 12 provinces, 12 characters, we don't get to see these provinces at all. So the characters really needed to be able to represent the worlds they're coming from. So the way that they were developed was alongside their particular provinces. It was like developing 12 worlds, but they had to be a good representation of it. So we got the idea of what the province is like without mm. actually going there. That was the challenge, I think. Okay. Which uh, which province, if you had to visit any of them, appeals most to you? Ooh. 
That's hard. So, some of them I definitely wouldn't. There's some really <laughs> horrible yeah. ones where if I go there I'd probably get mauled by like a rabbit animal or <laughs> killed by a tsunami or something. Uh, <laughs> I really like butterfly. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A, a buddy with flight with uh, wings on it. Uh, because <laughs> their province is quite calm. <laughs> And yes. chill. It's in the middle. It's not got extreme like weather. Mm. There's nothing out there to kill you apart from flying bunnies, which is lo- I mean they're not killing anyone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're just lovely flying bunnies, and there is quite a yeah. They're mostly monks there, so it seems quite nice and chilled out. I think they welcome you. Yeah, I think I'd like to visit that. <laughs> For an easy life. Yeah. Fair, fair. Probably definitely not anywhere near to the the bandage bit. Oh yeah, the, yeah, there's a bandage at the yeah, bottom. Yeah, yeah. Nowhere, nowhere near. Nowhere near the ground. Yeah, no. <laughs> that doesn't sound nice. No, absolutely Generally not. the lower you go, the worse it kind of gets. So, <laughs> so let, let's talk about D, our kind of main character. Yeah. So, such a wonderful character to get to know. And at the start, He's like a main character who doesn't give main character energy. Like yeah. it's just like, don't look at me. Like yeah. I'm just <laughs> here, I want to be ignored, I just want to go away mm. into the background. But you kind of are so intrigued to get to know him, like mm. obviously as the book progresses. So yeah, how did D come about? So yeah. <laughs> I have it. I like that you said that he's like a main character who doesn't want to be because that's I love choosing main characters who are like the last person you expect to be the main character in that in that plot. It's kind of interesting. So, but when I originally came up with the book, I had a sort had a different main character before I started writing when I was planning, and it was sort of a more typical main character in fantasy you'd expect in a detective one, mm. um, sort of more methodical, thought out, uh, <laughs> sensible, <laughs> an actual detective. <laughs> but then I had Dee, who was like the assistant to the yeah. detective. Oh, interesting. Because okay. obviously you quite often get like the comic relief, you know, quirky one is like the assistant on like the, the fun, fun side. But I just found him just way more interesting than the main character that I had. And then I was like, oh, who is this guy? Why is he like how he is? And then I just kept poking at him until eventually, well, he sort of pushed his way to the spotlight, <laughs> I guess, in my head. And then once I had him and the main character, I was like, that's just perfect. Everything sort of fell into place. So I think he kind of pulled it together mm. in a way. Yeah, definitely. More, more um, I just love the chaos. Yeah. Him. <laughs> he, I like, I'd like to think he just personifies like chaotic bisexual. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> And the, oh, without too many spoilers for yeah. people out there, just the obviously early on with the the suit yes. when he comes to dinner in. I'm just yeah, uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's one of my favourite moments because <laughs> you didn't want the spotlight. He also does kind of want the spotlight yeah, it, in the in the controlled way. Yes, yes. If you're yeah. telling the narrative, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I know when we last saw each other, I think you mentioned about your. Is it dumpling? Yes. Because I happen to notice that, that there's also a dumpling in the There is! <laughs> Coincidence. Yeah, I was going to ask you what came first. Yes. <laughs> the dragon dumpling or the cat dumpling? <laughs> the, the dragon dumpling actually came first. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I um, to say, oh, it's just too good a name. Well, <laughs> I got, I, obviously, you know, it's my debut novel, I wanted to ce- celebrate it in a way. When I got a cat, I was like, well, I can't just call it D, that's a bit too obvious. Yeah. So I called him <laughs> Dumpling instead. <laughs> and the Dumpling in the book is sort of like a nice little companion for the main yes. character and like helps him out and stuff. So I was like, yeah, it works. Yeah. And it's a cute name. So. It, it's a very cute name. I just, I chuckled to myself and I said, like, <laughs> you can call me whatever you want. And it's just like, we should call you Dumpling. <laughs> it works. It's, it's too good. It's too good. Um, who for you, uh, I know this is going to be a tricky one, hmm. is there any characters that were more fun to write that you kind of feel, um, for example, like I adored Grasshopper, she's yeah. just so, so sweet, and it, it felt as if that character would be really fun to write, hmm. like a, a kid in, in all the chaos kind of thing, so. Yeah, well she was definitely the most fun. Yeah. That. I, think, I think you could probably tell when you're writing, when you're reading, yeah. but because of like, I knew it would be tricky with 12 to have people remember who was who, so I actually did like a pass through the whole novel for each one, 
like just focusing on them and making sure it was like all um, consistent and everything so I kind of got to delve into each one in turn to see how fun it was. Obviously some of them I didn't have to go very far about because <laughs> <laughs> they were killed off. But uh, yeah, so no, Grasshopper was definitely the most fun because I just got to have her screaming random things in the middle of scenes <laughs> and like making inappropriate comments. Um, so the ones that you don't expect to be fun end up being fun. I found Jasper quite fun. He just gets really angry and ragey and breathes fire at everybody. So that's that was fun just to think how he would react in situations but those are the ones who are I'm most difficult to write is probably like the ones who are meant to be really sneaky and clever because then mm. I have to be sneaky and clever <laughs> <laughs> like Nergri is known to be like a you know a bit of a schemer and like mm. really good at uh, getting people wrapped around their finger so that, that was I had to take a bit more time than just having a six-year-old screaming out randomly <laughs> <laughs> Is that when the murder board had to come out? Yeah, we had oh, all the cool. screens and you just like, this person. <laughs> I did digital murder board, basically. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. um, so this, obviously your debut um, book, but you've written a few things and like pitched a few things over the years. Historical fiction, was it, that you first kind of started off? So yes. how did the journey come from there to... Here. Oh wow! <laughs> you did your research. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so my first book was yeah, it was historical fiction. Weirdly enough, considering this novel, it was a uh, set in the Crimean War, <laughs> which is just so different <laughs> from this. Is. But I actually really do love history as well, and I, I would love to go back to it one day, writing some historical mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, so that I sort of worked on when I was at uni, so that was part of sort of my university thing. And I just wanted to finish it to prove I could write a novel, mm -hmm. like the first one. But my true love has always been fantasy. That's always been where I wanted to, you know, concentrate on and write my books in. Um, so yeah, after that it was, how many did I write? <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a fantasy novel, then another, and then, yeah, so my fourth novel was the one that I got my agent with, and then this is my fifth written one. But this one is quite different, I would say, to mm. all the ones before it. The others were, like, the beginning of trilogies, they're a bit right. darker and grittier. Mm. I would say a little bit more traditional fantasy, mm. whereas this one is just me just going wild. <laughs> there's, like, a, there's a theme in this book of, like, breaking down walls, and this book was me breaking down my walls, I would say. Like, mm. just going, oh, just write it. If it, you know, anything that I thought was fun or I wanted to do, I was like, let's just go for it. Because after, like, four books and not getting there, you're a bit like, I just gotta do what I want. Yeah. <laughs> and if they like it, they like it. And luckily people do like it. And to... So we have to talk about um your other geeky pursuits. So you cosplay as well. Yes. Yes. And I, I do. didn't realise so you did a Lysipia a few years back. Yeah. I'm a huge fire emblem like yes, brand. I, do. <laughs> I was just like <gasps> Yeah. I'm actually doing another fire emblem cosplay this oh year. God. I'm gonna do Ferdinand, who I just adore. Oh so. my god. <laughs> He's just very pompous and <laughs> but lovely. He's like a Labrador, but he, he kind of he develops a lot as yeah. well through the game, doesn't he? He's an yeah. interesting character because he kind of starts off a little bit one note. Yes, I would and agree. Yeah, you're like, oh, who is this tough? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yes, and, he, yes. and he just becomes gets in your heart. Yeah, but yeah, that's happening. <gasps> oh, yeah, okay. I've cosplayed for a lot, a long time. Let me think. I was fifteen when I started, so yeah, a good while. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any characters you would love to cosplay as? If if money was no object and you oh, could you could get like the most like dramatic costume. Oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think. Uh, I know, it's, it's a it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. <laughs> I've really I've always about. wanted to do Samus, but have like a oh, proper gosh. like Yeah really good costume yeah because obviously we we do many many uh, yeah. comic cons yeah. and stuff and you see some amazing costumes mm. it would be yeah i'd want to do it justice yeah. yeah yeah i think i don't know i i always wanted to do uh you know garnet but around c9 her princess dress like the really yes. princessy one with all the embroidery and a proper bodice made and everything mm. it's just uh, quite intimidating but i just want to be like a flouncy princess for a day basically <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's always been on my list so i should probably do it before i like come way too long <laughs> she's like 60. <laughs> although there's no limit in cosplay you can cosplay whoever you want exactly exactly and there was something funnily enough 
obviously mentioning uh, FF9, but there was something that reminded me of Final Fantasy X quite early on, with the kind of the idea of that you're inheriting so much, you know, you've got to prove worthy of your position. Mm. And it just kind of got me thinking of the whole idea of being like the summoner and going yeah. around the world and kind of, I don't know, making people feel happy and that, you know, that sin will disappear again. But, you know, there's yeah, just the a, burden of that. Yes, While also, because yeah. they have these like, magical abilities, obviously, blessings, mm. but it, which sounds cool and fun, but also they are a burden, they have like a bad effect on them. Yes. Um, which I, I don't I can't really count the spoiler, but I always say <laughs> in case I'm not sure. But they uh, yeah, it's it's not all hunkadori is what I'll say. Which is yes, yeah, it's similar to that. I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> See, they this Final Fantasy no, just creeping, it, creeping into oh, yeah. lives. It'll find its way. <laughs> so, um, wrapping up kind of our conversation today, so we have to touch on obviously the beautiful, beautiful book. Yes. And also, you've had some amazing kind of character art and stuff done, which everyone needs to go on your Instagram yes. and go and check out and stuff. But there's just some incredible, incredible artwork. So, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you're thrilled with it. Yeah, no, I am. I really am. Especially because, like, there's a lot of anime sort of gaming influences mm -hmm. in it and like all the characters have got rainbow hair like different coloured hair and I thought oh this would be really fun to see in character art you know I mean they're really colourful and distinctive I hope that's the way from a cosplayer's point of view yeah. <laughs> I was thinking okay every character has an animal every character has a hair colour it would be really easy to cosplay if people wanted them to even casual oh, versions you just need the wig and the yes. the plushie <laughs> there you go there you go there you go we were talking to uh, Kate Dillon not that long ago yeah. about obviously the idea of being able to just change your hair colour by just thought. And yeah. just be like, oh, I'll just program it to be blue or green today. How amazing. <laughs> that would be handy if you were a cosplayer. That sure. science needs to, needs to, <laughs> needs to evolve. Um, so for our kind of last two questions, mm. so what are you working on next? If you're able to give any spoilers, or is it too? Um, <laughs> I think I can give vague, vague, vague description. <laughs> it's, it's again, it's a fantasy standalone. If I'm mentioning this one's a standalone, mm -hmm. um, but it's a little bit more on the horror side. So I'd say more fantasy horror. Um, <laughs> but it's about a bunch of kids who wake up in a weird labyrinth with no memory and missing body parts, and they have to complete tasks to get out room by room yeah. it's sort of like a fantasy escape room like saw in reverse <laughs> kind of yeah <laughs> they get their body parts <laughs> well i never said they'd be getting them back oh, okay. i said they're gonna get out <laughs> well we'll see about that <laughs> but yeah that no it's amazing. yeah it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds very cool i'm very working very on that at the moment so hopefully i'll finish that soon yep yep <laughs> So to finish off our interview today, so what are you currently reading, watching and playing and is there anything in particular you're super looking forward to uh, in 2024? I'm currently reading Herg by Phoenicia Rogerson. Um, it's sort of like a, and so, uh, I guess it's a retelling, yeah, mm. of the like story of Hercules, but it's from everybody who knew him. Yeah, interesting. yeah. Oh. It's, it's not Disney Hercules. No, no, no. At it's all. not Herc as you know. <laughs> no, it's very good. It's very, like, the chapters are quick. It's written in sort of a modern style, which I love. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so it's, that's really good. Um, the, what am I playing? Um, <laughs> I finished playing Baldur's Gate 3. After how many hours? <laughs> a lot. And then I was like, okay, obviously, I'm not, I'm, I'll leave that for a bit. So I'm currently playing Baldur's Gate 3 again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've started again <laughs> with a new character. So I think I'll be playing that for the rest of the year. Yeah. Uh, so that's why <laughs> currently playing. Uh, what am I watching? I'm not really watching. You know what I am a bit obsessed with that I just started yesterday? Okay. You know, The Traitors? <laughs> Yes! I'm the easy oh, one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the last season is like the best season of any reality. Well, I guess it's sort of reality competitive TV. Tra Traitors is yeah. so good. And it's so interesting. The American Traitors, they have like, I say celebs. <laughs> They have oh, yeah, the celebrity one. Like I C, C, yeah. C, C list and like <laughs> celebs and people who were on like Jersey Shore and stuff like that. Mm. On whereas obviously here, it's kind of I suppose more normal. Yeah, normal people. <laughs> normal people. Yeah. Um, 
but so so it's amazing what people will do to it's like the most dramatic sort of like campy yes. <laughs> over the top yes. so anyway, it's, it's so good it's so good so it started again so i'm just obviously going to be obsessed oh, with that for a bit yes. <laughs> so. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.